Hello, and again, welcome to Bit Depth. I'm Santiago Ramones. Uh, this is Mikey. They just call you Mikey. You want to say yeah, your well, last name? <laughs> uh, my name's Michael Blanton. They call me Mikey. It's fine. It's yeah. Just an easy nickname, obviously. Uh, what, what's your, uh, your like, username, handle, like, alter ego? <laughs> Stage persona. Yeah. Um, I go by Metroid Mike. Um, I'm a chiptune artist in Tulsa, where we're currently in the Double Tree Hotel, a very fancy hotel. Friday night of Tokyo and Tulsa that we uh, managed to escape so that we could <laughs> do this thing because I'm actually in Tulsa with you to be able to do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, man, uh, I've always wanted to do some sort of, like, I, I've at least been, like, really curious about chiptunes. Yeah. And, like, what... Um, Sucks you guys couldn't come to the panel because I explained it all earlier today. <laughs> Well, at least now you have all your answers figured out. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, in an easy um, way. So, like, yeah, I'll probably be giving you, like, some of the same questions that Fair. you had then. The basic FAQs. Yeah, um, but at least to start with one of the hardest hit hitting questions, what's your favorite video game? <laughs> um, it's really hard to pick because right now I'm super into Chrono Trigger again for mm -hmm. and Justin, me and Megan's old boss. Yeah. Uh that's his favorite game and I finally picked it up on DS and it's it's really good. <laughs> it's really, really good. Um and then obviously I'm doing Pokemon Go. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh the but if I had to if I had to pick like one video game because <laughs> um, Super Metroid is always like my go-to. Yeah, it's always my go-to. That or like Metroid Fusion. Yeah, but if like if but I also have to think about it. Like, what's if I had to listen to like a soundtrack for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd probably just go ahead and pick Chrono Trigger now, yeah. just because it's definitively like one I keep coming back to. Yeah. Well, I, I think especially for like musicians, we uh, that's a big thing. Like, yeah, it's not just like. It's not just the game. Yeah, like, it's what you hear. It could be like a moderately bad game, but even if the soundtrack is amazing, we're like, man, I'll just I'll just keep playing this. Yeah, it's why it's why Mega Man Two is the best one, <laughs> is because like that soundtrack is probably the best one. And then and then vice versa, like you, the game could be like the greatest game ever, but you're just like, I cannot. Deal. If it's like a 10 second loop over yeah. and over again. <laughs> like Goat Simulator's fun, but after 10 minutes, like, shut up. <laughs> um, so uh, so you, you just stay in like the, the chiptune-ish like era, or do you... I'm very drawn to it. I, I still play, like I have a, I, I have a PS4. Um, with a lot of games, I'm noticing, especially now with... And my schedule is so weird. Like, I have yeah. days of, like, I'm busy all day. And then I'll have, like, three days of, like, I <laughs> guess I'll try to find a job to do tonight. Um, so, like, I have The Witcher. It's my only, mm. it's my, the only game I really have physically on PS4 at the moment. I have The Witcher. It's really hard to sit down and play The Witcher. Yeah. Because it's so big and so long. And I, <laughs> and I love it. It's got everything I love. Mm -hmm. It's got all these cool fantasy elements, stuff I recognize, and all the stuff I love. But it's, like, I can't be like, oh, I'm just going to sit down and play, like, 10 minutes of The Witcher. It's, like... You really can't. You, you it's like a, at least a minimal, time. like an hour and a half, two hours. Exactly. So it's to do like a mission. So it's it's that kind of thing. But so I, I tend to draw back to those older games because like I can just sit down and I can play like a level, progress a little bit, and come back. Yeah. And the, the only game I've seen that does that still is Dark Souls. Like mm. I can play twenty minutes of Dark Souls. Yeah. And make some progression, and then turn it off, come back, and I'll be right where I left off. Exactly. So. Um. And the reason we're talking about video games so much is because I feel like to understand why you do chip tunes, yeah. you kind of like the game aspect. Yeah, the game is very it's, important. It's fifty percent of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and so did you? Did you just grow up with like you know eight bit, sixteen bit era games, or did you jump into it later? Um, yeah, we had we had a Nintendo Entertainment System in my house for a long time, and like this big box of games. I'm sure Mom accidentally sold it at a garage sale. Um, if she listens to this, I'm sure she'll hate that I said that. So sorry. Um, 
we had it, and I wish we still had it, but uh, we had just this box of games. Like, I mean, we and we had a lot of the big names, too. Yeah. Like, we had, like, a bunch of Mega Mans. We had, uh, like, I mean, Balloon Fight and a lot of that kind of <laughs> stuff. And just, like, it's what we had first. And I was able to pick that up quicker. I was able to play Mario quicker than yeah. I was doing other things because I... It took me a while to, because I'm super dyslexic, it took me a while to, like, read mm. and whatnot. And I mentioned this on my panel earlier, too, was um, it took me a while to read. So, like, gaming was, like, a huge thing for me. I could, I could I could sit down and I could play a game. I could do a game. Yeah. Mario was, like, go that way and jump. And, yeah. like, basic things are, like, that's a bad thing. Don't touch it. Mm-hmm. And, like, so I was playing games probably about, like, four or five. Yeah. Like, when you are able to comprehend A is the, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so we had that for a lot, and we had that, and eventually we went from that to a PlayStation, and then I wanted a 64, and we mm-hmm. kind of went back and forth on yeah. a little bit of that. So I, like, while well, we simultaneously great, had yeah. a Nintendo, and then by the time the PlayStation 64 era came out, we had a PlayStation before we had 64, but mm-hmm. my friend had a 64, so go. I was able to like kind of make my rounds on all of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, for the most part, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then... I guess this is like the the leap into music because you know it it is it is the video games and it is the music. Yeah. Um, as I know a little bit about you, that uh, you went to ACM. Yeah. Um, so what what was it that brought you into music specifically? Music was something that I was able to get into about. A, I knew I was always interested because like there was something I was wanting to do and I had to be able to find the instrument like before I even got into bass and strings yeah. and whatnot it was like my mom was like well let's try the violin and I tried the it was probably one of my first instruments was that one I tried it I didn't really get it and, like fretless things was just like jumping ahead of <laughs> yeah. me I didn't even know what frets were yeah and then I was like I kind of don't get this and then we tried clarinet and we tried and it was a little too formal I just couldn't figure it out mm. and then um eventually my brother john was like hey let's try bass <laughs> and i was like okay and i was like looking into it and i really really wanted i talked about this on another podcast i wanted i was like i remember he took me to fiery brothers at their old location and i saw a bass guitar that was a sh- like a shark <laughs> it, was like, it was like crappy, like $100, yeah. $150 bass. And I was just like, it looked like a shark. And I was like, that is the coolest thing oh, yeah. I've seen in my entire life. <laughs> and that's what I want. My brother was like, well, let's, let's, keep, let's keep looking. <laughs> but uh, like, we looked around a bunch of stuff. And eventually, when my friend was doing drums and everything, he was like, he was like we need to, like, you know, did the thing, like, make a band. And I was yeah. like, okay, cool, let's, let's do it. And, you know, we had guitar players. And I was like, I'll play bass. Mm-hmm. And I just, I liked it. And I got into it. And I was like, I just, and then I, a few months later, I was like, "Cool, Mohawk and playing in crappy, <laughs> crappy bars and venues in a crappy punk and metal band." Mm-hmm. And going back and listening to it now, it's some of like the best and worst memories. But and the music is terrible. Oh yeah. But like, <laughs> I mean, that's how I got into it. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's really how you get good at it. Yeah. Like, it, it's really progress sounds like shit. Yeah. <laughs> that and it's really hard to get good at like a. A cooperative instrument like bass just sitting in your room alone Mm -hmm. like you have to have like other people to be like ah this is what the groove feels like yeah before I and like I didn't even get good at that until I went to college yeah like I remember after our first performance Joe our teacher was uh, after we played and it was um, it was a clash song I remember correctly can't explain that's a clash song yeah I (laughs) I believe it's either that or I'm gonna sound dumb if it's not, because in my head I'm also thinking maybe it's the Who. Don't worry, I'm like okay. Well, it's, rock I, is not my thing. I I completely forgot, but it's one of those songs. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we got into it, and it was so easy. I could play it in two seconds now without even looking, and like yeah. so. And I was done, and he looked at me and was just like, "You either need to quit today." Or forget everything so I can reteach you everything. Oh, so essentially man. all my good music skills I got in college. Yeah. Because I was the best, worst one out of all my music, out of all my friends who were into music. Yeah. So, because when you're not good at school, focus on the thing that you have fun with, exactly. which is bass. <laughs> like even in high school, I would duck out of some of my classes to go practice in the orchestra, yeah. which I couldn't reach music, but I still went. 
I mean, did you did you jump into ACM like immediately after high school, or did you did you have some like off kind, years? Kind of. It was because my school time, my schooling was excluding a couple, excluding college. Really, I never stayed at a school for more than two or three years because mm-hmm. mom wanted us to try private school. I tried it. It was like the worst possible thing for me. <laughs> we tried public school, and I general I genuinely enjoyed public school mm-hmm. because. I, I not so much the classes, but like the, the people there was. I was able to connect with easier. Mm-hmm. They were just like real. It wasn't this because private school is just public school with people who have a filtered education system focusing yeah. on one thing. Yeah, and like one core belief system rather than public school, which is like you have everything. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's that kind of thing. Um, uh, so yeah, it's yeah, yeah, no, like. Um, the like the off years between like yeah high yeah the off years the, yeah that's what we're I completely lost track of what yeah you're good <laughs> um, it was I dropped out to do my GED in the GED test which for someone who's just like coming out of high school GED test is easy it's pretty mm-hmm. easy mm-hmm. Um, I suck at scholastic education mm-hmm. I, I learn much better through like. This kind of thing. Yeah. And so it's hard to get that. So I didn't even know what I was doing with the GED test. I really didn't get it. So, like, I turned in, like, a blank test, and they're just like, you didn't do anything? And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, okay. And then we just never went back. And then we got into <laughs> online high school, and, like, I started doing some. And it, it's, it's kind of crappy to admit out loud. But um, I did, like, half of it. And I was kind of taking my time with it because, I mean, you're a kid in high school and yeah. you don't have to get up and go to school. <laughs> you can just get up and then my mom would go to do work and so I'd be home. And I'd, and mostly what she's looking at is I'm doing, like, the art classes and, like, some of the science yeah. classes and some of the math classes. But, like, none of the English, none of the history, nothing like that. Just, like, yeah. the easier ones. Because even science can be sometimes easy yeah. and, like, interesting to look at. But uh, And then so my mom comes in one morning and was like, congratulations, you graduated with B and threw out my printed out diploma at me. I was like, let's look in, let's, what do you want to do? And I was like, music. And so she's like, okay, well, your sister's going to, my sister's the one who discovered it first. Mm. And she went for vocals. Oh, yeah. And so uh, my mom's like, well, Molly's going there, so I guess you're going to go there too. And that's just yeah. how it kind of worked out. Was my sister was there. <laughs> so that's where we went. I didn't really know yeah. what I was getting into. No, I, I like that um, it wasn't even like hesitation. It wasn't even like, ah, oh, maybe I could be like, you know, I try, like, being a plumber or something, you know, get, like, a skill job. It's like, nope, music, let's well, go. Yeah, it's because it's, I had been doing that off and on for so long. And, like, once you – when you're 13 and, like, you're playing in a metal band. And, like, granted, you, it's all your friends who are there. And, like, mm-hmm. we're all in high school. And, like, it was that whole, like, hardcore scene kid movement that happened briefly and then, like, became, like, a, a more of a fashion statement mm-hmm. at that point. And so, like, that, that hardcore punk movement that was coming out of, like, the 90s and early 2000s, which I didn't even know I was jumping into, mm-hmm. but, like, I was like, yeah, I'm wearing, like, I mean, I was literally wearing this pair of, like, not this the same one, but, like, this exact same pair of pants <laughs> at that show, yeah. and I just had a big mohawk because I thought it was fun, yeah. and I was like, oh, let's play a metal show, and back when we, Tulsa had the pink eye, I mean, I had that place, people left because they got cut on the wall and had to go get stitches on their arms oh, man. and i was like we just played that show i want to do that forever <laughs> <laughs> so it was and i really didn't know much else like mm-hmm. i didn't i didn't think to myself like well i guess i could go study law i didn't even think of that it's not I, like I, an option or yeah anything. i'm not i'm not smart enough to do that <laughs> and so i was like i could go study this i could go say now like see my options being more of like i work well with my hands and stuff like that so i could go do like a building job being yeah. fine but and be content with myself, but I just, the music's what I've always known and what I've always done. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, at this point, it's kind of like, I'm, I'm already here, you know? <laughs> I'm in my 20s and I make oh, some money doing this. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, might as well try to push it to be something, and if in a couple years it's not and I'm in a financial crisis again, I'll just be like, all right, well, let's look at what I can do yeah. for work. Okay, and so... Uh, we spent a little bit of time a while ago, like talking about just like uh, the people at ACM, mm-hmm. like and all the teachers and stuff, or just like, I mean, they'll just change your world. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> really. If Joe is probably other than my other than my mom and my immediate family, Joe is probably my base teacher was probably the person who's been the most impacting 
factor in my mm-hmm. entire life. Like, I'd be a totally different person yeah. if I hadn't met him mm-hmm. and had my group of guys that I was with. <laughs> like, I would be totally different. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, just to jump into, like, inside baseball, I guess, but, like, how how deep did you go? Like, did you... Like, did you go, like, full-on, like, music theory, like... Yeah, we did. Oh, man. <laughs> um, I, 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 sh- if I was a smarter man, in air quotes, <laughs> I would have stayed for a bachelor's in either business or production, mm-hmm. but I was, financially, I wasn't sure if I was going to be yeah, able to yeah. make it out, and I'm still dealing with that. Mm-hmm. I don't even have a copy of my diploma because I still owe the money. Yeah. So I literally have, other than like the digital record of my high school diploma, sure. I have like nothing physically proving that I finished any schooling. <laughs> so like, that kind of sucks. But Except uh, for your music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I can do it. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just been that kind of crazy. It was like music theory and it was, I uh, mean, I forget how many we started with that class and like some guys dropped out eventually. But I mean, it was... I remember like some of our first day, some of like our first like real work stuff. Like we had a crazy crash course in our first year of like he was making sure that if any of us were performing, like if any of us failed, that was on him, and he wasn't going to let that happen. Yeah, he very much held that standard. So by the time the second year rolled around, and we sat in our first class of like our second semester, Mm -hmm. he was like, "Now we work," and I was like, "Okay." And then (laughs) we sat down, and it was like. Here's, you know, you know, the real book. Oh yeah. Yeah. So he like opens that up and it's like, okay. And pops that. And then we have, we're all plugged into one mixer and each one of us had like, we either, he would have like active, like all of us are off except for one. Yeah. And he'd be like, play like day one, just like play. Yeah. And we're like, uh, and it's like, oh, you messed up next person. Oh, you messed up next person. (laughs) And then eventually we get to where we're all doing it. And he's like, okay, now we're going to learn like. This and like so when it came to time for like the weekly performance thing, yeah. Which you're going there currently, right? Yeah, but I'm in production. Yeah, but like you've seen the performance mm-hmm. stuff. It used to be before they started doing these like concert things and make it more fun. <laughs> it used to be there was like in my group, I think there was like 24 bands or something yeah. like that, and we all had to play the one song once a week and wait through that entire thing. So that class took forever because it was like, this band just played that song, now get ready to hear it 23 more times. Oh, man. So it's like, we go up there and play that song. So by the end of that week, even by the middle of the week, all of us were interchangeable, like as bass players. Like if someone was sick or couldn't make it for some reason, they would tell Joe in advance and he would still give us like a passing grade type situation. Like we could make it up, but it was like, you get someone to cover for you (laughs) <laughs> you let me know that you're not going to be there, and they damn sure be able to be able to play the oh, song. Yeah. So it was like, if I couldn't be there, I know I could call any of the other like eight, eight or twelve. I forget how many we were. Yeah, like any of the other guys, and I'd be like, I really need you to play with this band in this key. And it's like, okay, and like yeah. you go there and just yeah. do it. Like that was what he wanted, and that mm-hmm. was what he got. And if anything less was you were, you he'd make you feel like that big. So yeah, and so I mean, given like your kind of work ethic of like, oh, I'll just kind of do the art classes in school. Like, how is, how is that transition going into like, all right, you better know this stuff and you better know it. Well. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was kind of, it was really scary at first because, uh, and I, and I, I mentioned this now, like as it's a casual thing because it's become more of a, I don't want to say casual thing to be this, but like, <laughs> um, I'm autistic mm-hmm. and we didn't know that until I was like 18. Yeah. Like, I, like, the only thing I was ever told in school was, like, oh, some people just aren't smart, or, oh, he'll get it eventually. Yeah. And it's just, like, the, <laughs> am I, how, yes, okay. yes, you can. Okay, it's, like, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like, it was that kind of thing, and so I had that kind of thing for a while growing up was, like, this frustration of, like, I'm just dumb, I'm not good in school, and then finally mm. when they're, like, no, you just have a hyper focus. Yeah. And, like, so your brain doesn't always do these weird processes right and I was just like what and so like yeah. going into college after I had these classes that helped me with that yeah it was um it was really scary like I had a moment of like I had to talk to my teacher and be like like and I leveled with him I was just like I don't know what I'm doing I need help I don't want to fail and like so I remember we had to do this flaming lips tune which <laughs> 
I'm not a fan, but I had to play it. So that's that kind of mentality. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I have to play it, so I have to play it. Uh, and it's, it was a super weird, and even now I could, pr- now I could probably do it fine. But like, <laughs> it was this super weird, complicated tune to our, I mean, we had days of the sheet music's in front of me and I had to like really barrel down. And like, yeah. he sat there and like, he gave me like all these different ideas of how to play the song. And he remembers like, all I did was like, either, cause he didn't want us to look. So all I did was stare up count with my foot and sit there and play the song so I was like on stage like in this position being like <laughs> like trying go. to play yeah. and like when he was saying he's like that was the most boring performance I've ever seen you do but you played it perfectly yeah. and so I was just like that kind of thing of like I don't want to fail I don't want to fail it was yeah. terrifying because even in the like the history classes and stuff like that some of those I barely passed yeah barely mm-hmm. and it was only with the help of like my mom being like okay i'm gonna help you with this paper sure okay i'm gonna help you with this i'm gonna help you with this because i just suck at it i'm just like my brain and it's it's not like a lazy approach it's i literally sit down and i don't know what i'm doing and if it's explained to me i can kind of get like something out mm-hmm. but it's just it my brain doesn't do it yeah and so i just was like why don't we just put me where i'm good and exactly. then i just go off mm-hmm. that's what i do <laughs> and i and i think the it starts becoming clear, like, if you if you just, like, look at your record and go, like, you know, F, 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 A plus, F, F, what's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, like, sometimes, like, I think the lowest grade I got in college would be, like, I, the lowest grade I think I got was, like, I barely skirted by with, like, a D, mm. because I looked at my history teacher, and I just leveled with him. I was like, I'm going to be honest with you, man, I enjoy history. Mm-hmm. I really do. And the problem is it's really hard, to, unless you're like this really abstract teacher, it's yeah. really hard to teach history hands-on. Exactly. Unless you like go do something. Like sure. go to a Civil War reenactment <laughs> yeah. or like reenact it yourself. Like yeah. it's really hard to ha- be hands-on with something that was in the past. Yeah. So it's, um, so I just like, I'm not good at papers. I'm not good at, I'm not good at tests. Yeah. I'm not good at this. And people, and some teachers acute, just equate that to being lazy, which because like if you work hard you can do it and yeah. it's there to a degree I agree <laughs> but not completely all the time and so it's just like I turned in a paper that eventually essentially my mom did and he was like you wrote this paper and I was like yeah I totally did <laughs> he's like what's in it and so my mom and I worked out the system of like if I can learn it and explain it to her and yeah. tell her what it all is she'll write the paper sure so cuz that way I know what's on the paper exactly in general <laughs> but then, like, give it to him. Because writing papers in English and, like, citing sources and, like, you can't copy it, it verbatim, but you have to re- yeah, you have to reword it to where it's not copy. But I'm like, but it's that. Why don't I just, like, read that and then copy? It's stupid. <laughs> it's the same shit. Yeah. So it was that kind of stuff. So it, w- it was scary. It was really scary. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, again, like, it just it just shows that, like, whenever you do excel, like, you – you get good at it. And so when you like what you're doing, it's not mm -hmm. hard to practice. It's not hard to get better. And, and I mean, it, it, it shows whenever you, you, you are able to like at least crack down and go, yeah, like you stomped your foot and had like very bad stage performance, but like, man, you played it it perfect. (laughs) And that, um, and that, that just like, you can just throw that in the face of every teacher that's like, oh, you're just lazy or you're yeah. just stupid. And it's like, no, no like, I, I, I did it. <laughs> I did it. It just didn't look good, but I did it. <laughs> um, and I think that, like, that shows much more than just, like, like being good enough to just get an A or something yeah. and everything. It, like, it shows that you, you're able to excel even better than the people who just kind of, like, are – smart naturally yeah. or whatever like yeah. I, I think that that speaks so much more and I'd rather have a guy like you in the room that like can do it really good because you care <laughs> yeah. rather than just like the guy, the guy who emotion. just can do it yeah. and do it well but I don't like his attitude you yeah know? yeah that, that, that's an, that's a huge thing his attitude <laughs> um okay and then chip tunes man what um uh, how do you even do that crap? <laughs> um, well, we'll break down what I have because I run it all, I run off a of Game Boy specifically. Yeah. There's other programs that do similar stuff. Um, my program is called uh, Little Sound DJ LSDJ for short. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and it's clever. A, yeah, right. <laughs> it's a tracker program. So when looking at it, I know your podcast no, no, can't that's, see, that's but fine. Like, I'll visually do it in front of you. It's like you have your four channels because I sh- should have brought it so you could see it. You have your four channels. You have your pulse one and pulse two. Yeah. which is like your triangle wave. Yep. So a lot of that's like your melodies and whatnot, and you can do some other effects and stuff like that if you just get deeper into it. Your wave, which is essentially sound waves where you can run like bass. I like to run kick drum out of there because it's not as crunchy as yeah. when we go to the next channel, which is noise channel, which manipulates white noise to make a lot of drum sounds. Cool. So I get like hi-hats, snares, crashes, explodey laser yeah, sounds, yeah. like stuff like that. <laughs> and so you, it's all about working with those. And so like that's that real basic and so you assign numbers, and all those numbers in the front you see are arbitrary of mm-hmm. what you put. I'm really linear in my yeah. thinking, so it's like my first one. Sorry, my first one is one. Of course. My next one is two. <laughs> um, so like I'll work with that, mm-hmm. and then I try to keep like my blank ones like the max I can go up, so that way I know it's just blank, and mm-hmm. like and so, and then within the numbers that you put on there, you go into the next screen, which is a chain. And the chain mm-hmm. is that series of arbitrary numbers that this arbitrary number holds. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're going from this file into this file. <laughs> and within these, you can either have it all be the same. You can do – that's what, the next page is where you, like, you get in like your notes, your octave way, yeah. your commands, your instruments, sure. stuff like that to make it be like, do I want it to go boop or boop or like <laughs> something like that. You can do that there. You can sign your notes. And from like if you want to go even deeper mm-hmm. for, from like your instrument – you go to the next screen, which is like your instrument screen, mm-hmm. which progr- like, and if you, the b- basic way to say that is like how you're writing your sound wave. Yeah. So like, I want it to cut off here. I want it to be this loud. I want, and the envelope here, and sure. I want it to be this kind of wave. And then you can go in from there <laughs> into a table. And a table is essentially when I have this instrument playing, what's like this instrument doing in here? Yeah. So it's like, I want it, this instrument to be like an arpeggio kind of thing. Oh, okay. You can yeah. have it be, without physically writing out a complete arpeggio, you can kind of have that, like, like if you listen to any of my music at all, it was like, uh-huh. in some of my songs, like, there's the background of like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that table, that's, that I wrote that to go, yeah. so I'll have that one instrument being like, and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's like, it's like. This file into this file into this file into this file into this file, which leads back to this one. That's awesome. So that's the best way to look at it if you're looking at just document files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so all of the, the chip tune music is basically four uh, tracks, essentially. Four channels working off, and because it's a tracker program, yeah. unless I make it do anything different and like cha- make like commit it to change at any weird time, mm-hmm. you have a tempo of what do you set it to. And then when I hit start, it's going to play through what I have set. Yeah. For what if and if I have like four here and five things here, the timing is going to get off of it, but it's just going to keep going in that logical step exactly. until I make it stop. So it's yeah, I'm working off of four channels to make like these. So if I want like a kick drum sound here, but I want to run it in my wave channel, and I want that there, I can't have a bass note there. I have to have it like somewhere else, and I have yeah. to like work with like placement. It, it's. It's really cool because it um, it becomes because like uh, how do I word this <laughs> like there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of connection between you know music being of like the heart or whatever and music yeah. being of the mind and um, a lot of this stuff is very Both. mind <laughs> yeah um, like you know just understanding how to use this freaking all right here's your four channels and yeah. then your cables the and all that stuff. It. Yeah, it, it gets really it mathematical. Makes, yeah, um, which is very much what my brain is. Because my yeah. mom was an English major and my dad did history. And I was like, I told my mom once, like, I like math. Why? Because I have a right answer. Yep. Like, I have, <laughs> this works. It's like, four plus four is always going to be eight. Mm-hmm. Like, that <laughs> will always be eight. Yeah. Not like, what's the best answer? It's like, shut up, English. <laughs> like, what's, they're all right. So if I circle any of them, I'm technically right. But, like, yeah. I hate that. I hate that. Oh, yeah, no. So that, that, music being mathematical is, like, super, like, just refreshing of, like, yeah. this will so- always sound like this. Yeah. So make that work. And But it's still, like, a mixture of the two. Yeah. Because it, you... Then you can get all these weird experimental stuff yeah. once you get past that. But, like, you, you get your math out you get your yeah. like all right here's the here's the 
thing that I can process in numbers and yeah. facts, and every time it's going to be like this. Okay, yeah. I'm there. But at the same time, it's like, you know, this thing makes me feel this way, yeah. and that's why I made it that way. Yeah, exactly. Um, Which is why I have like a lot of same tropes I have in a lot of my songs. If you like, if you're able to analyze songs and you listen to my songs, you're like. Okay, here comes that thing. Here comes that thing. Yeah. It's because I have these things that I really like, which are accessible. Yeah. Which for me is like, oh look, he has cording in a minor key. Oh look, he has a breakdown. Oh look, he stopped the drums for chords. Yeah, exactly. Like I have these things I like to do. And I mean, everyone does that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at look at anything on the radio. Yeah. Like so, it's that's um, fine as long and as you then know. It makes same it. with every like video game music. Yeah. Like it's you know, how do we make a simple song? like interesting enough without like taking up all of the data that we need to look at Mega Man. Exactly. And yeah. so and Mega Man has a lot of, of stuff going for it. Melody. And then a lot of that stuff also comes from like counterpoint because it's just like very simple stuff that we mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Mix it up a little bit more. It's still the same thing. Yeah. But like just different enough to keep your interest without making it too difficult on whatever you're running through <laughs> yeah it's and then if you get into like the the production side of music and games i mean there's some big names who work in just video game music that you like like um i forget his name like what's his face from like i think uh, i'm throwing out names that i'm not 100, always 100 percent sure yeah, because fine. i can't remember but uh like i think he was in the police did like stuff for spyro oh geez something like that yeah it was like the police or some some, some band like yeah. that he did the music for spyro like the first two Spyros, and it sounds really good. Like the yeah. Spyro soundtrack is trippy and cool, <laughs> and like or like Koji Kondo, the guy made Mario, like yeah. the most recognizable melody of all time. Yeah, like I play that anywhere, and people are gonna know what it is. Oh yeah, and like you look at all these cool ideas of just like how do I convey this feeling through electronic noise? So it's like you're, it's it's that same thing you're talking about. It's that this makes you feel this way. Like I'm playing Metroid when I listen to Zebus. Or like the mother brain, you know, music and stuff like that. I know like this is some serious stuff mm -hmm. because I'm and I'm in a space odyssey, but it's a two D thing on my screen. Exactly. So it's like it's that it's that emotion thing. And so I tap into that like nostalgia bit with my music, which yeah. is also why I love it so much because I'm making my own nostalgia music. Exactly. So it's very much like a <laughs> like I feel all fluttery. Yeah. Um, to get a little bit like you know. Um, I consider myself more of a composer than anything else. Yeah, that's, um, good. that's good. And so I use that, I use that hat too. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there's like a a strange part of like, kind of like you just said, like your own nostalgia music. That um, you ever just like listen to your own music and go, man, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, and I can say this. This. Excluding like a couple of fun things I did before, where I just genuinely enjoyed it, um, I still have trouble hearing my own voice, which I think anyone does. Yeah. Um, so like when I have like background vocals on a track, I'm like I have, I hear myself. That's weird. <laughs> um, or like my physical playing, and I can analyze like my like my physical technique was bad. With with my chip to music, this is the first time where I can put on my music, mm -hmm. and I even make this joke. So it's like it's it sounds narcissistic, but it's not. It's like this is the first time I can put on my music and be like, like I have that feeling of like this is cool, this is mine. No, yeah. one, like I didn't make like a basic guitar chord track that anyone can play. It's yeah. like this is mine, and that, that it's very special. So yeah. it's like I can I can play, put on my SoundCloud playlist and be like, I made that. Like that's yeah, cool. Right? Like that's really cool. Like, yeah, <laughs> and I think that. Um, Honestly, that's anything. That that's a feeling that every musician should sort of have. Yeah, that exactly. Every you like should creator should have love because music. you do have to have like a bit of an ego to you have to, to be yourself, able yeah. to, you know, if, hey, if I want to go, this is my product. Like, buy it. Yeah. If I want to go out and play, I have. To, if I want to go out and play some show that's hot shit, I have to bring hot shit. Yeah. And <laughs> like, I have to be able to talk big. I have to be able to sell myself. I have to do mm -hmm. like. And my biggest thing is like because I'm such a like easy person, like <laughs> I've been to contract signings for like gigs and stuff like that, and I had to like look nice and like have sure. someone with me who can also read the contract <laughs> and stuff like that because I'm not gonna look like an idiot and be like, what does this say? Like yeah. I'm gonna, like fine print <laughs> stuff. Um, so I'll 
I have people with me to do that. And they're like, so what's your rate for your playing? And I'm like, what are you offering? Because yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really figuring this out. <laughs> and I don't... I don't uh, kind of the more that I, I meet musicians and kind of like hear interviews from like even the biggest musicians, you know, we're all, we all kind of have that imposter syndrome of like, like am I really like, it, it, yeah, that like you paid how much for this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like uh, I have a couple friends and, and I'm, and this, and I say that I stress this is I don't think I'm famous. I don't think I'm a big deal. Yeah. I think I'm fun and entertaining, and I know I can deliver a fun and entertaining sure. product and music. Um, I have friends who will call me famous just because a group of people downtown know who I am, and I've gotten sure. to talk to some cool people who are have some m- a- amount of fame, be it on the internet or on a music yeah, circuit sure. and whatnot. I've got to play with some, um, but... I'm not famous, <laughs> and so it's like I have all these fun little connections everywhere. But um, it's still a thing of like, like they told me I'm playing since I'm playing XBO in September. Yeah, and like to me, it's like they're like I looked up the page one day. They're like, oh, you're playing with Mega Ran, and I'm like, whoa. I was like, yeah, I know. I looked. I was just like, what? what? Yeah. And like I, I just sort of, I was like, am I playing like the same place? <laughs> like, or is it like? I'm over here, and he's like the after party. Where he's like, "No, you're the after party." And I was like, "So, uh, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah." And I like I've listened to him when I was. I found him when I got into chip tune and stuff like that, nerdcore hip hop and stuff like mm-hmm. that. I found him, you know, I was listening to MC Chris when I was in high school and stuff like that for nerdcore mm-hmm. hip hop. But then, like, I found Meg Ram when I was in uh, college because I found like some random bits of his tracks, sure. which got me into like MC Lars and uh, Samus and a few other people. Mm-hmm. And now I tweet at Samus every now and then. She's the nicest woman in the entire world. <laughs> and but, I, I'm going to be like clear with you. I have no idea who most of these people are, except for Megaran, who I heard like on a different thing once. Yeah. But yeah. Like, well, Samus is uh, a female nerdcore hip hop artist mm-hmm. who I forget exactly. I don't know if she's getting her doctorate in music, but she's getting her doctorate in something. Dang. And I know she's also like a teacher and everything, but she's a uh, she does nerdcore hip hop and. That woman is a lyrical genius and is the <laughs> nicest person in the yeah. world. Oh my gosh! Like, <laughs> I remember she tweeted out one day. She's like, she's, I think she was passively doing it. Like, oh, I should, I should make like a live band and stuff like that. And I instantly, because I, ha- I'm notified on her Twitter. Oh, I yeah. instantly tweeted. Her, I was like, I will, f- I will pack my stuff. Oh yeah. I will fly to New York. <laughs> I will be there tomorrow. Do you need me? And she was like, Well, I wasn't like completely serious. I was like. Do you need me? Oh, like yeah. I'll be there, like because <laughs> I would love to work with them so much. But yeah. it's that idea of like working with people who I think are huge, who probably think the same way I do. Is like I'm not huge. Exactly. But... Like you, you asked Mega Ran the same things. Yeah. Like, oh no, I'm not. Like they're just they're just gonna tell you their hero and be like, oh no, but I'm not at this level. Yeah. And at some point, like, you know, we're all imposters. Yeah. We, we don't really know, like. I mean, I don't know. My my big, like, you know, pie in the sky band is like Radiohead. Like I, fair, you know, like, could even Radiohead like be like, oh yeah, but I'm not like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Like <laughs> that, that Radiohead, <coughs> and no hate on it, but like Radiohead was never something I got into. So like I don't know their influence, but I could totally see him being like. Like, yeah, but we're not the Beatles, or I'm exactly. not like, I'm not like, I don't know, Meatloaf. <laughs> like, if they, I don't know if they're yeah, into Meatloaf. And everyone, everyone, and everyone should be into has Meatloaf. Their, but, like, everyone has their like, yeah, but look at this person. You yeah, know? I like to think that everyone at least has, uh, and I would do anything for love on like some playlist. Thing, <laughs> but that's just me. Um, okay, and so we kind of touched on like the the feely side or whatever. Um, so I guess we can jump into this this aspect of it um what um what drives your views on the world is it religion is it you know Um, just life (laughs) i guess that's a good way to look at it It's it's just life but um i think what drives me the most is um a few months back like almost, I mean, more more so than a, more than a year now. Um, 
I had well more than a year for the first part, and then the second part's been since the beginning of this year. Sure. Um, I had a minor health scare. Yeah. Of, um, I I I had had panic attacks when I was a kid, and like like this crisis thing of like because we didn't know what my autism was and we didn't know how to deal with my sure. depression and confusion and all this other stuff. But then when I got all that sorted out, like I never really had a panic attack again. Yeah. And then I remember one night I'm just over at my friend's house. And I literally thought I was going to die in the next three hours. Yeah. Like in my head, I was like, I'm dying. My pulse is like racing. Like I'm freaking out. I'm having a heart attack right now. And I'm, mm-hmm. I wasn't, it was just like, it was just a panic attack. And yeah. so then like, I remember calling my mom and being like, I th- like something's wrong. Something's wrong. She's like, okay, well calm down. She's like, do you need an ambulance? I was like, I don't know. She's like, okay, well you're with Josh. So make your best interest and everything. Mm-hmm. And so like, I didn't sleep that entire night. And then I yeah. got, I got home the next morning and my mom was like, I like try to get some sleep, but I couldn't get some sleep. And so she ended up taking me to the ER yeah. and they checked me out and they're like, you're fine. And they had to ask me questions like, because they have to they're like, yeah. uh, like, are you on any street drugs? Are you on Coke? Are you on meth? Or something like yeah. a withdrawal. And I'm like, no, I'm not on anything except for my, my prescription stuff that I got sure. for my antidepressant stuff. And I was just like, I just didn't get what happened. And then, I was fine for a couple of days. I got some sleep, and then like a month later, it happened again. And then I've had a couple more since then. And then the beginning of this year, I went in for like I was feeling like like physically I wasn't feeling good. Yeah. So I went in because we still had health insurance, and I went into the doctor, and like they took my blood pressure, and they were they had to bring in another machine. Oh uh, come on. Yeah, to make sure the other one wasn't broken. Uh. That's how high my blood pressure was, and they're like, and then I go into the doctor's office, and he was really straightforward with me. Which I really appreciate for a doctor. Yeah. Um, and he was like, "You're 25." He, he's like, "I'll be." On, he's like, "I'll be real with you. Your blood pressure is so high. You could have a stroke or a heart attack this year." Man. He's like, "If you don't fix this, I don't see you living past like 40." Yeah. And I was like, "Like being told that at 25 is like, yeah, man. <laughs> like, oh God, I'm gonna die this year." And like, I still struggle with body anxiety with that kind of stuff, even sure. though now with my workout and diet and exercise and like losing almost 70 pounds now yeah is like and and by the way like i i keep seeing like you saying like oh man i'm at this weight and i'm at this weight <laughs> yeah. and i'm like ah oh, yeah you go man <laughs> Pump! And, like, and like just changing all that and um and i know like my blood pressure is like way better than what i was i'm i'm pretty much around average to like a little bit high higher mm-hmm. than average now because i'm still big but um, so it's unavoidable. Even with medication, it can get up. Yeah, but, sure. Uh, it's like still I struggle with that. Like, oh, I I feel weird. Am I dying? Am I am I dying? Like I still deal yeah. with that because my the brain's crazy. So like I guess what drives me the most is that kind of thing of like I thought I was going to die for like a month. Mm-hmm. Like I thought my life is over. I'm 25. It's going to hurt. I'm going to die Man. in my car by myself forever. Like, <laughs> like something's going to happen or like, I'm going to be at home by myself and like, I'm going to have a heart attack and not be able to call anyone and be alone Yeah, because that's how my brother Kevin died. Like mm. almost a year ago now was he t- went on a lunch break and he had a heart attack in his home and he couldn't call anyone and he died. Wow. Because he was struggling with diabetes that he didn't tell anyone about and all this yeah. other stuff. And so it's like, that could happen to me. That could easily be me. And he was just in his, and he was in his 40s. Yeah. So it's like, that kind of thing of like, I need to get up. I need to make myself better. I need to, I need to make some sort of impact. So I push my music and I push like this influence of like positive and gaming culture and like pushing yeah. this thing that I can now. So I'd like, that's what really drives me is to get up because I was like, I'm... I had to like accept like most twenty five year olds don't think about dying every day. Oh, yeah. It's it's not something you should think about every day. But it's <laughs> it's like it was a thing of like I honest to God thought I was going to die like sure. in a month or two. So it's I have to get up and do something because yeah. I what what do I have? I have nothing. So I had to do something. And, and that's that's exactly the kind of like change in your mind <laughs> yeah. that you need yeah. to get you through that, that so switch you, is crazy. So that you don't die in a year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like and the next day I was like, well, I got to get up. I got to walk. I got to do this. And like, I, like, I mean, I dropped it. I dropped. And like, I've had it since. And like, I'm, I'm way more like 
fit, like there's some stuff that's hard, like pizza is still hard to pass out. Yeah, like sure. I'm really good at like <laughs> I don't go get fast food. I don't go do all this stuff. But it's like I mean the next day it was like I'm only I'm only drinking water. I'm only doing this. I'm walking every morning. I'm doing this. And yeah. then a month later I started going to the gym with a friend. And now I just go by myself. Yeah. And like I get up, I do it. I don't mind going. It's mm-hmm. like and because I'm physically seeing these results of these numbers go down. I'm watching clothes fit me yeah. better. And like stuff like that. Do you feel better? Immensely. <laughs> like I'm, and I won't. And for anyone who listens, if you're on a medication, consult with your doctor. Don't do what I did. But like, because it could go really bad. Yeah. Is um, since working out and dieting and exercise, I don't take any antidepressants at all. Mm-hmm. I still struggle with panic attacks. I still struggle with anxiety because that's just the brain. And sure. even with a chemical level, or that can still happen. But. The only thing that goes into my body now is I have a dietary supplement, which I've looked at. It's not, it's like all natural stuff. Yeah. Like, it was like, I mean, like valerian root to help me sleep, like sure. melatonin, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever, that kind of stuff. Like, uh, I have a, a supplement that goes with that, which is like fish oils and stuff like that. Just like a, <laughs> and a multivitamin. Yeah. I take that and then I work out and diet and exercise. And like, I, I wouldn't, I can have days of being depressed. Anyone can. But, like, I don't like to think that I'm just a depressed person anymore. Yeah. I, I get up, and I don't feel like – I get up, I don't feel lethargic in the morning yeah. anymore. I can just get up and go. Yeah, you're not you're not a depressed person. You're a person that occasionally gets depressed. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, I, I feel so much better that way. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, is there any, like – I mean, is there any, like, God behind that? Is there any, Or is it just, like, look, man, I have to – be alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to be alive for like I need to prolong death for as long as I can. Yeah. Like anyone does. Uh, <laughs> and my mom will give me these like real talks like that. She's like, You're Michael, you're going to die. It's okay. <laughs> we're we're all going to, but you're probably not going to for a while, so calm down. Sure. But yes, you are going to die. Like my mom <laughs> my mom's always been like that. But uh I I wouldn't say that for me personally, um I the religious practices I do of like um, and I'll probably butcher the word because I'm horrible at reading, like Asa True and stuff like that. Uh, uh, easy way to look at it. Another word for it that gets mixed up in a lot of stuff is like an Odinist. Okay. Some of like really Norse beliefs and stuff cool. like that. I have these old traditions that I keep with my friends who also do this, who also yeah. have this lineage because it's a cultural thing. Yeah. Like we get up and we like every, like generally once a year we have, you know, when we tell people we're going to a Thor party. Yeah. Like it's, like it's it's a it's a friendly way of saying we're going to go outside, manually dig a fire pit, set some stuff on fire, fight each other, drink, and fight each other some more, <laughs> and like do some pagan blessing. Cool. Like it's, I do this because I like having that tied to my my family culture. Yeah. Because that's part of my family lineage. Sure. Um, do I personally believe that there is a <laughs> person on a chariot that drives the sun and the moon and they're forever chasing each other because they're being chased by wolves do i believe that the head do i believe that the earth is the skull of a giant and the trees are his hair no um i i hold like and i find it so rude that they call it mythology i find like the the study of myths but like i find that so rude but if, if i have to place a belief in something i believe i'm here and then i know science can tell me what I am and like what's yeah. around us and stuff like that. So I, above all things, I trust science and I know science can be wrong and then be changed sure. like anything, but science is okay with that. And that's why I like it. It's like, yeah. Oh, we were wrong. Okay. <laughs> like, let's move on to the right thing. Yeah. It, it, it's not hold firm in this old thing. that has been, yeah. and, and not to bash anyone. Cause I have friends of yeah, a million no, faiths, fine. like, like you, like Sable, Megan, even some of my personal friends, even my mom. Like my mom's yeah. a Christian lady, and she's just mm-hmm. like, "Well, Michael, you know, pray about it." And I'm like, and I've and, and I've had some days where I'm just an asshole. I'm like, "Mom, that doesn't exist." Yeah. Like, <laughs> like just to, because I'm mad at everything. Um, but like, uh, so I guess I would say if anything, I believe in myself, and I believe science can tell me what it is. But I have like a religious practice or a faith practice for a cultural benefit. Yeah, I feel like I I'm, keep, I'm keeping a culture that's mostly dead alive. And I think um, that's a really good and healthy way to do it yeah. because um, 
a lot of the the point of me asking everyone about their religious beliefs is it's is not because I want to challenge them about it. It's no. not, be, but it's because your beliefs change your behavior. Yeah. Um, and so if you if you really think that you know from as broad as I'm going to die this year, <laughs> yeah. or just as as specific as there is a mouse in my head. Like, yeah. and, and actually believing that there is a mouse in your head yeah. completely changes, changes like, or from whether or not you're going to pretend that there's a mouse in your yeah. head. Like, and so, no, I'm not equating people's beliefs to, to having, mice having a mouse in their head. But, like, it, it really does change how you behave, how you treat other people. Exactly. And, um, and I think that that cultural practice of like, you know, like having this camaraderie with friends and like digging a manual fire, but like there's, there's stuff in there that, you know, may not be like, oh yes, no, there isn't like a guy in the sky pulling the sun with a chariot, yeah. but like you do get something out of like hanging out with your friends and doing this ritual really yeah. that, um, it, it does benefit you. Yeah. And it, it, it it's, it's cause spirituality and like the science of it aren't like, you don't have to be one or the other. Sure. You can be both and it's okay. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, it's, we have, you know, you know, I've done the thing of like the internal like prayer of like, you know, like, okay, just give yourself up to an energy and like, Make yourself feel better. And if that's what makes you feel better, that's fine. Um, and it's also really hard to have this kind of belief system because the cultural aspect is tied to neo-Nazi fuckheads <laughs> because Hitler took everything good in the world and made it like – and I disclaimer now, I am not advocating Nazis and Hitler. I am not a sympathizer. I hate them. But – you know, Hitler thought he was doing the right thing. Exactly. So he took symbols for peace and the symbols of power and applied them to Germany post World War One because Germany was just in ruins for yeah. the most part. And he was like, "We're going to make Germany great again," which <laughs> is a resemblance of other things. But um, I mean, that's what he was. That's what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the fact that I have that tattooed on my hands mm -hmm. sucks. For yeah. some parts, uh, <laughs> some people can see just that. That could be considered an iron cross. Yeah, like it's really hard for me to go out and look the way I do and carry myself the way I do. Sure, I've been. I mean, I've been equated to being a Nazi more than once in my life. Yeah. I remember getting this, and the Cox Cable guy pretty sure was a, a skinhead <laughs> because when I went outside and like he was inside my cable box, he looks at me and he's a big, white bald guy. And he looks at me with like dead serious face and was like, like just like eyeball my hand and me. And I was like, I'm gonna go inside. He's like, Yeah, that's a good idea. And I walked inside and I was like, I think the cable guy's a Nazi. I'm gonna go in my room. Whoa. And like, and this was years ago. And like, and then I, I remember wearing combat boots when I was you know growing up as a kid. And I had because they last forever. You get them cheap at Army Surplus. And they look badass. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Um, it was then I learned that colored laces mean stuff. Oh man! Um, the boots I got, the laces, <laughs> the laces were broken because I got them like on sale at Army Store for like twenty bucks. <laughs> the laces were broken. They use like hard plastic laces on those mm -hmm. boots because they're like old retired military boots. Sure. So I got some that happened to be white. Didn't think anything of it. Just put them on. No big deal. Uh, walked around and I got stopped because apparently in neo-Nazi gang culture. White laces mean you're, you've just started and you haven't had your curb party yet and you haven't taken a life. So when you wear red laces, you have. And so uh, I got checked for that and I'm like, well, let's just take these off. Yep. <laughs> and then like, let's get, let's, let's look Google something. Yeah, yeah. So it's having this belief system that's tied to like a lot of negativity and being like, mm -hmm. It's not bad. I promise. Yeah. There's some creepy stuff in there. Yeah. But there's some of that creepy stuff I just don't do because, like, once again, yeah. I'm not an idiot. I'm not going to have a <laughs> – I'm not going to sacrifice, like, seven cows and seven yeah. chickens and seven people and then have a virgin take mushrooms and then me drink her pee so I can drip out. Like, I'm not <laughs> going to do any of that. That's all real stuff, but I'm not doing any of that. Yeah. So um, for my sake and just for – 
because I'm very curious. Yeah. Uh, can you describe and explain the tattoo on your hands? Yeah. So, oh, and I also have a mule near that I've made myself because I, I blacksmith for a hobby. Cool. Uh, it's very fun. <laughs> um, so, in this language, uh, if we translate it to Roman, and some of it's really hard because a lot of these old languages. Uh, don't have al- always have like an official translation because sure. they're so old and stuff <laughs> can get passed around weird. Because I've seen several different people say this is a different symbol, yeah, stuff like that. But in Roman, for the most part, P L A Y B A S S, play bass, because that's, that's what I got awesome. my degree in, right? <laughs> and so, but the problem is people see that, and the S S lightning bolts are on my hands. I have to deal with that because I'm yeah. I'm not going to pay the money to get a tattoo removed. I got this for me. Yeah. And so when I'm 65, I'll have these. But you know, I'm not going to go to a World War II veterans home. Oh yeah. I will wear gloves. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah. So it's because that's a totally different world. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So it's just the symbols on my hands. That's what they mean. Oh man, that's. That's so cool. And, like. they, and then and they have their own meanings, like, and I don't have any of them on me, like, you know, if you add, like, another arrow to here, that's, like, a strength rune, and then there's, like, life and mm-hmm. family and, like, you know, wealth and all this yeah. sort of stuff. So, like, on the Mjolnir that I made, I hand-etched in a lot of that stuff of, like, okay, at the top you have your strength, your strength which is just the arrow, and that's, like, uh... If I remember correctly, because I'm bad at this, if I remember correctly, it's, like, Odin, and then below that's the N, which is, like like a protection for yourself like spiritually sure. and physically you have like your strength rune and your courage rune and your wisdom and like yeah. something like that just like a token for yourself and listen because i hand forged that mule near i was like what do i want for myself and put those on there and i have that that's cool and i made it out of plate steel and it's heavy and annoying but i, I have it. <laughs> oh man that's super cool um I don't know if we're... Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I got all the time in the world, man. It's oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what is... You know, what does your... Um, your cultural and traditional, um, you know, uh, belief, I guess, like, how does that... How has that affected your life? How does that mean, like... From since whenever you weren't doing it, but now that you've like gotten more into it or something, like how has that affected you? Like the cultural aspect of like practicing and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's made me feel like I have like a ground and something that's like special to me, I guess, besides yeah. my music. Because like, it, when you have one thing in your life and it gets like ripped out from under you, mm-hmm. and you have nothing else, it's really scary. Yeah. It's really hard and it's really scary. So having like multiple things I can do, like. Uh, so having that kind of thing of like, I have friends and people I know that if I have any questions on that stuff, like my friend Jamie, uh, I'd call, I'd call her the den mother of a lot of our friends (laughs) because she, she is very much into the ideals of how a lot of that stuff works and how it makes her feel better Mm -hmm. because they're just gypsies by heart. So it's just how (laughs) they are. So like how it makes me feel is I have like a ground in something where I can, because I'm such a logical, mathematical person in my head. Sure. And at the end of the day, we're all animals. <laughs> we're all just animals. We just happen to be have opposable thumbs and are really good at making buildings. Yeah. Um, it's, I have a way to go, you know, let loose that, like, that animal in, in, that's yeah. in anyone's mind and body is that idea of, like, I can go let this feelings out and get out these frustrations and like sure. feel like I have a ground and get some footing and something like a little more human than an analytical brain of like, well, that's stupid. So we do this and that's, well, that's wrong. So we just, and like the mathematical yeah. linear thinking that I do every day with <laughs> having autism and like obsessive compulsive disorder. So it's like when I, with that kind of stuff, I get up, I brush my teeth, I use the bathroom for five minutes, I go make a breakfast of three eggs because I have to have three eggs. <laughs> I have at least 12 to 15 ounces of water, and then after that I take my supplements, I go walk for three miles. I have to do these things or else yeah. my whole day is like weird because exactly. in my head I feel like if I do it, don't do it, I'm going to explode. So it's like these weird like tropes I have. So if I can go let out that kind of frustration yeah. every day and have that thing of like just be an animal, I guess, yeah. in like a safe environment Mm -hmm. where I know I'm not getting judged and I'm not having that feeling of like what I'm doing is wrong or 
anything like that. Because people have come who people have come to those kinds of events that we do because they're very much like within our friend group. Yeah. Who don't practice any of that, mm-hmm. and literally they just show up and they eat and they have fun. Some people protect. We never make anyone do anything. Sure. Because um, some stuff can get weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it's and which and it's never for anybody. So we're just like, okay, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. you're fine. Yeah, uh, I feel like that really um, it helps you like stay balanced. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> I feel a lot more balanced having that aspect of like going and letting out that kind of energy of like, yeah. of like, oh my god, God's fighting demons and like <laughs> like and going out and like I mean the first year we did it was hand to hand fighting. I yeah. mean it was. Me and the guys got together, and the food that we cooked, like traditionally, you take the ash from that, like we cooked goat and mm-hmm. a few other things, and like take the ash from there, put that in like our sweat and water and stuff like that, and make the paste, and that's your war paint, and then you go fight in a fire pit. Yeah. Like we did that. That's. And my that's friend so Mike cool. fractured his ankle. <laughs> and then the next year, we we're like, okay, let's not do hand to hand combat. So yeah, it sounds a little dorky. But, I mean, after, like, traditionally, after hand-to-hand combat, what did the young kids learn? Weapons. Yep. So, like, okay, so me and Zach got in, got in, we made some wooden shields, we made, like, PVC pipe, you know, foam weapons, but we made several weapons, and we got outside, and we whacked each other. Like, some people didn't get hurt as bad. I mean, we were whacking enough with foam weapons to break wooden shields. Yeah. So, I mean, we were hitting each other. Yeah. I need to spar with you sometime. (laughs) Yeah, right? Right? Um, No, I I think that's awesome. Um, I guess some closing questions. Uh, What is... What is the value of people to you? Oh, that's... That's a good one. (laughs) Um, People to me... It's, oh, that's so hard. Uh, <laughs> because because people like at the end of the day, to me, everyone is important. Yeah, everyone's important. Um, do I, as a human being, do I treat everyone the same? No, no, because not everyone is the same. But I don't. Not everyone's your mom. Yeah, everyone's not a, like, yeah, not everyone's you. And like, yeah. like you know, it's that same intention of like I help with like. If we're getting dorky again, it, like I help with the Team Valor in Tulsa for sure. Pokemon Go, and I help. I'm a mod on the, one of the main pages for Valor, and yeah. like I help try to promote like a positive environment. Like I've got guys out there because yeah, there's a lot of trash talking teams. I know yeah. the, the people who are playing it know it's all in fun. No one takes it seriously. Yeah. Like walking in, you know, I'm wearing a yeah, Team yeah. Valor shirt, and some mystic guys like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, because Valor gets a lot of shit talk for being meatheads and whatnot. Yeah. And, and like the funny thing is like. No. It, it literally just comes out of nothing. Yeah, because it's nothing. It's just, it's just red. It's just it's blue. blue. It's, it's just, just yellow. <laughs> it's but they're different. But no, it's a. But it's that same idea. Of like I got them. Like I got them. Like when we're out doing Pokemon Go stuff, it's like I've got them picking up trash. I've got some people donating blood to get tickets yeah. to the zoo, so they can go play in a good Pokemon spot. Yeah. Like use good things out of this cool thing. But like you know, I was like, help as many people as you can. Go to that, and I get to the gas station the next that like same day. And a guy stops me asking if I can take him down to Utica when Utica's literally like a five-minute walk. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not driving you. I don't know you. <laughs> Go away. You know, do I want him to get assassinated? No. But everyone's important. But at the same time, everyone's like, you get what you get. So it's, it's like, I don't want anyone to die maliciously. Sure. I don't like bad things to happen to people. But... I'm also like I don't know you. You can you can stay over there, like yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. I guess. Yeah. No. I that's that's great and honest oh, and like it, it's not like mean or like. No. But like, yeah, man. What, would what I shoot, do you? Would do? I shoot Hitler? Absolutely. <laughs> would Would I like? Would I want Hitler to get beat up? Yes. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I think we can all agree on, like, I want Hitler to get beat up. Everyone else is fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, you know, I, I still I still really love that because you you can still respect the people around you. You yeah. can still, you know, encourage good behavior yeah. uh, among your community. But, like, 
you're also taking care of yourself yeah. and not driving random strangers yeah. just five minutes away. <laughs> yeah, and like I, and like I mean, it's it's that it's that assess assess your situation. Like, is the strange guy, no matter what skin color he is, no matter what he is, old or young, um, am I going to drive a stranger? Nine times out of ten, probably not. But like, I see someone. Like, I've literally stopped seeing like some older guy like i saw an older guy with a walker just walking down like like down the street some like mm-hmm. down the street i think on mingo and it's like it's 98 degrees outside with a heat index with like 65 degrees 65 percent humidity and i'm like you're you've got to be in like you're not like 80s like what yeah. are you doing and i pulled over and i'm like do you need a ride like where are you going <laughs> yeah and he's like oh i'm just going over here to the corner store because he doesn't live that far and i was like get in my car like I'll just drive you. Yeah. So it's like it sets the situation. Is the old guy with the walker going <laughs> to rob me? Probably not. Does the movie say he will? Yes. Well, but like, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, time, you. I think I can. You, yeah, I think I can take a seventy-five-year-old man. <laughs> you who paints your face with <laughs> the ashes of the goat fire <laughs> yeah. and punches your fa- your friends in the face yeah. like i think you can take a yeah. old guy exactly. on a walker yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so it's like assess your situation but yeah it's it's that open and honest feeling of i do protect myself and my people around me and i promote good behavior am i rushing off to get in a fight no should people die no but <laughs> at, the yeah, end of the, at the end of the day that's it yeah you know uh Thank you. I, I really respect you. I really appreciate all that. Um, wha- what are your things? Promote your things. Okay. Uh, <laughs> because I didn't do this at the panel very well, which is why I left. I was like, well, what do I know about a t-shirt? Oh, because I didn't say I had them. Uh, <laughs> um, you can find me, Metroid Mike, like Metroid the video game. Mike is in my name. They both start with M. Should be easy to remember. Uh, I'm on Facebook under that. Um, I'm on SoundCloud under that. Yeah. Um, everyone's like, "Do you have a website?" No, because I'm not good at that, and <laughs> I and I need to get with someone who does. Um, I can help you out with that. Or I there can you go. Get you in touch uh, with some people with that. Um, I'm working on getting my EP out. Hopefully by September, so I have something good to sell at XPO. Oh, but okay. for a demo, if you want, I'll burn you a CD for three bucks. <laughs> uh, I have T-shirts for fifteen. Um, Why don't you just like go to SoundCloud, listen to this awesome I'm getting music? There. Just, no, like I'm tired of the yeah. listener. Like, uh, listen to this guy's music. Yeah, like, it's 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 as simple as that. And I, I said this on on my friend's podcast that I was on because mm. he does the Gamer Stand podcast in Oklahoma City, which I need to get you in touch with them because they're really cool and they're really cool guys to talk to about games. Yeah, awesome. They do like a news kind of thing for games. Yeah, and they're really fun. Um, and I just went on their stuff for Monster Hunter, and I talked about this on the Monster Hunter one. Cons- the consumer end of like what you're listening to, what you put out, and what I put out, and yeah. what a restaurant puts out is like very little difference. It's people have no idea what like clicking a listen does, and like I, I get so annoyed when people are like, "Oh, I just haven't had the time to listen." I'm like, "You've been in your car, you've been at your home. I know you were on Facebook for two hours, yeah. like." You've had the time. You just haven't done it because you didn't remember, and that's fine. But they have no idea how much like a share, a click a share button. That means the world. Oh yeah. Like something that means the world. Comment on something. Tell someone yeah. like a simple gesture of like, hey, I thought this was cool. Here you go. Like yeah. Because I love that. because on SoundCloud there's there's these two numbers and it's yeah. like plays today and plays this week. Yeah. And I'm very sad when that plays plays this day is very low yeah. and I'm like, man. Yeah. And but but whenever it spikes just a little yeah. bit, you're just like, I'm doing Cuz I've had so many where like I'll go play a cool show and like, oh, your plays this week were like 30 and I'm like, oh, that's amazing and then like the next week it's like Two and I'm like, <laughs> mm. and like, and I even have some people I know personally who's like, oh, I haven't listened to your stuff. I'm like, what? Like, yeah. you haven't brought it to me. I was like, you're on the internet. Like, it's there, <laughs> and it's it's that little thing of like hitting a share. Like, if I just look at it this way, if every sing- and I'm not, I don't ever ask this of anyone. Yeah. It's like if all of my friends on my Facebook page hit share once, like that would skyrocket my page oh, yeah. ads, and then. If one of their friends did that same thing, mm-hmm. it's it's just like it doubles that number or more, mm-hmm. and that shows when I go to like email like XPO or mm-hmm. 
I tried Wizard Comic Con for Tulsa and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm like, I promise people will listen. Sure. And they look and they're like, oh, yeah, you've got, like, some decent amount of plays, but, like, your Facebook page has, like, 204 likes. You know, that's not compared to, like, this 40,000 that we have from yeah. this other person. More people will go to that, so they're going to go to that. I'm like, that, I could have that if people would just hit a button. Exactly. It's crazy what that consumer mm-hmm. ideal is because everyone's trying to do it. Yeah. So it's all about making dope shit and then putting out that dope shit so people get that. So, yeah. Uh, so do you have a Twitter? I do. Um, the handle is at the Nerd Viking. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember that. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, find this dude. Uh, listen to his music. I've listened to it. It's really cool. It's really fun. Um, you know, like, I could, you could even, like, mute your 8-bit game <laughs> and put his music on and be like, this feels great. Oh, you know, I didn't mention it before, and I guess this is a tail end thing kind of close out on, is the music that I write is uh, to science fiction slash fantasy mm-hmm. uh, short stories that I've written that go together into one, like, story. So, like, the seven so- five, six or seven songs that I have go into, like, a mini short story. And That's so, like, cool. when it, sometimes when I have, like, the time, like, if I have, like, a 40-minute set, mm-hmm. I can, like, tell that story. Yeah. And then, like, it's kind of like being in, like, a Dungeons & Dragons game with, like, one person and then figure out, like, something cool and, like, I can send a person <laughs> on a journey because I wrote the story for something. Yeah. So I write, I write to a story. So when that EP comes out, I'll have, like, a readme file or, like, something that when you pop it into your computer yeah. it'll pull up like these little seven page things of like cool. what if that is That's so cool. you'll get like a science fiction story with my music too <laughs> I should have mentioned that before but I will yeah no that is, <laughs> and so yeah man um, thanks for coming on uh, no I will have you on again at some point Woo! and um, I always end with like my three things which is like my religion of sorts which yeah. is love never fails it's going to be okay I might be wrong thanks for listening <laughs> <laughs>